What's poppin' your tag squad? It's boy Sad Tag on the Y'all see the title, man. Road to 2K Hell Black wants to be gonna dumb exploit one of the North America's most depraved killers, bro. I don't think I said that word right, but whatever. But Road to 2K, man, I've been a little bit on my second channel as well. If you wanna check that out, it's gonna look link the description. But it's a 27 minute video, let's get Dude, straight into it. That subscribe button I like this call if y'all like this crime type reactions because it's in the closet but what if i changed that to a skeleton in my freezer sadly in january 2018 this was a harsh reality that the community of oshawa would be faced with sending shockwaves throughout the entire city and as investigators dived into this grisly case newly discovered dna would confirm that they had found more than they had bargained for however despite finding multiple victims within the house of horrors a narcissistic killer would make himself the main protagonist of the show, yeah. or so he thought. But who was this twisted and violent man? How did he commit such horrendous like actions? Like and and most crucially, like, if you want, like, who a and long where were his shit. victims? Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, folks. My name is Adrian. Y'all hear about that submarine that got, uh, they can't find type shit? I seen it earlier, I just scrolled past the type shit, but I see like, a little, I didn't really look up on it. I might check out a video. It's like a submarine that they can't find. That shit got lost underwater type shit doing like 40 We're hours of particularly breathing. Harrowing case. And now, like that, for so all you true crime enthusiasts out there, you may have heard of this case before already. I might have already. checked that shit out. But I might react to so it on my second channel. But so it's certainly button. worth talking about again. By the way, welcome or welcome back to Coffee House Crime. Shall I post true back? crime in strange cases back. as a new camera. Thank you to everybody who oh, supports me on Patreon. I, like I really do appreciate it. And I've used this month's earnings to buy myself a new camera and lens. Um, ever since day one, I've been using a an iPhone. Um, not sure why it took me so long. Hey, that's dumb. Hey, y'all, hey, hey, that's what's up. My boy got what? 1.72 million still using the same shit they started with. Hey, that's W. I know it's probably not what he started with. I don't know how long he's been doing this for, but like, hey, that's W. To, to change, w. but here we are. And yeah. Thank you so much, guys. And now, with that said, please grab yourself a coffee, pull up a seat, and get ready for the deep dive. This is the case of Adam Strong. Adam Strong. Oh, I didn't say the case. Adam Strong. Welcome back to Canada, folks, and more specifically, the thriving city of Oshawa. Found on Lake Ontario and around 60 kilometers east of Toronto, this city has been in existence all the way back since 1842. The town was established when its first post office opened, being named after the native word for the crossing place. Eventually, okay, Oshawa found me. itself becoming a city in 1924. Manufacturing has always been a core part of Oshawa's economy, with one of the most renowned companies, General Motors, operating in the area since 1876. Nowadays, this vibrant city is filled with a bustling arts and theatre scene, and hosts three major film festivals throughout the year. Parks are in abundance here too, with a total of 1,000 acres of na- festivals throughout the year. Parks are in abundance- Yeah, that part looks good. You know, literally all grass and one basketball that's done. And here too, with a total of 1,000 acres of natural area to enjoy. Now, Oshawa also boasts one of the oldest hospitals in Canada, that Ooh. being Lake Bridge Health, that's which was founded in 1910, that's and tied to its shit. already long list of... Yeah, that, 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 that new... That, that being Lake Bridge Health, look, which was founded in 1910, sick. and to add to its already long list that's of bragging sick rights, for a hospital. it also has one of the lowest crime rates look, and one of the look, highest employment okay. rates in the entire of Canada. Top things to do here include the Oshawa shopping center, bowling, bowling in Harmony Valley, bowling. and the all or nothing brew house. And of course, being Canada, there's plenty of great coffee in the area too. With a place as peaceful as this, it is easy to see why the events of 2017 would cause so much shock and disgust amongst the residents. And one of those living in the lie. area at the time was a young woman That shit would be scary Asher. as hell too, bro. Imagine a killer in like a close, I don't know, a close netted community type shit. Cause I grew up in like a small, uh, uh, quiet uh, town too, like Lathrop. If you're in California, if you're no Lathrop, next to Stockton type shit. Imagine a killer being in a close knit community. Bro. Born that to be scary, Dion, You know who it is, and there's someone, there's a killer out there that's in a small town type shit. Nicknamed Tash Brown by her family, Rory she was tough. described as a kind and clever child. Her childhood was described as relatively uneventful, but it is interesting to note that some of her relatives are on the wilder side of life. 
Born into a biker family, her grandfather, Bernie Guyden, was the founder of Satan's Choice Motorcycle Ooh. Club, and her uncle was an active member of the Hells Angels I too. Fuck with Safe that. to say, hey. this is a family you wouldn't want to make enemies with. That's what I'm saying. Throughout her early yeah, teenage years, Rory tried very hard at school, and by the age of 13, she'd even won Cadet of the Year in her local squad. However, and it's not known why, but shortly after this, things began to take a turn for the worse, and it's likely that drugs are to blame. Mm. Methamphetamine and a long battle with addiction followed, and sadly, she turned to sex work to help fund the habit. Yeah. Her mother watched on in despair, but despite her best efforts, Rory simply wouldn't help herself. It became so bad that Shannon had to seek external intervention for help. Damn. By the time she had turned 17, Rory began to make positive steps forward. She'd found her own apartment, re-enrolled into education, nice. and even found love with a man named Tony. Things were finally Tony. looking up for her, which is probably why friends and family were confused when she suddenly disappeared. Mm. Because in an instant, Rory had vanished. Damn. After experiencing- and So you tell me if- the disappearance happened when she was doing all that drug shit, she was going downhill. They would have been like, ah, she disappeared type shit. But since she was going back up in her life. A man's like, relapse, Rory was taken to the hospital by a friend and her mother. Sadly, the pair couldn't stay with her. They left the waiting room relatively quickly after this, mm -hmm. leaving Rory alone in the waiting room. However, she seemed yeah, to change her mind shortly uh, after this, and around 15 minutes after sitting down, she got up and walked out of the hospital, wow. a surveillance camera capturing her calmly walking away alone. I mean, you don't, you don't expect to w the, disapp dis the disappearance section to... When she walking out, you don't expect nothing to happen, but you know, hospital type shit, I understand. Whatever she was doing, or wherever she was going, only she knew herself. And tragically, this was the last time Rory Hushay would be recorded on camera. Dang. As the hours went by, yeah. concern began to grow while her silence remained. How do you just remained. disappear out of a hospital? Like, are this cameras in the front? Aren't there cameras in the back? Like, how do you just disappear type shit? That's my, like, what? How the fuck did you disappear out of a goddamn hospital, out of all places? And as those hours turned into days, others began to seriously worry. Sure, the sense. first person to finally alert the police was her guidance counsellor, with her mother doing the same thing not long after. Extensive searches were carried out across the city by friends and family alike, but despite their best efforts, no clues or information were left behind in her absence. Mm. Some suggested that perhaps she had run away and didn't want to be found. However, this theory did not make any sense to Shannon. She knew her daughter very well, and knew that something her. else must have happened. Two weeks later, and entirely disconnected from the case, a disturbing discovery was just about to be made. The date was September the 11th, 2017, September and that's around 11th? The date was September the 11th, 2017, Damn, and that's around 8.30pm, an 11-year-old boy and his grandfather were peacefully fishing on the Oshawa Harbour, oh, taking in the sunset they, and the summer's built, gentle dusk weather. Was... It was at that moment that the pair saw something floating uh, in the water. At first, they thought it was a dumbass. Of course, it should be floating. It would not be underwater. I'm so stupid. My bad. This was a dead animal. But as they took a closer look, their stomachs began to churn. Floating before them was a human female torso, absent of a head or any limbs. And of course, they called the police immediately. As officers oh searched the water for God. any other body parts, the bro, news broke out. Like, bro, bro, that shit, just, that shit just makes me sick, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's one thing killing someone and then take cutting off their limbs, their head, like bro, come on. Bro. To the Oshawa public. However, frustratingly, as the weeks passed by, no conclusive DNA matches were found. And so the police were left with this mystery of who the victim was. It was kind of obvious that this was no accident. It would have to be pretty severe for this to be one. For months, there were no leads on who this person could be. But all of that would suddenly change on December the 29th, when a very serious phone call came into the police. Mm. A young couple living in an upstairs apartment of a house found at 19 Macmillan Drive began- That shit right here? That shit look crazy, there you go, that shit look like one story. ...to experience some rather unusual problems with their plumbing. To begin with, they were no longer able to drain the bathtub, and a few days later, a very foul smell started to rise oh, from the no. drain. Understandably concerned, they decided to ask their downstairs neighbour if he was experiencing the same issue. And downstairs, this neighbor, oh shit, my bad. Downstairs neighbour? ...being a very crucial person to today's case. And his name was Adam Jeffrey Strong. Having lived in this apartment for over 14 years, 
years, the 45-year-old man was a very perplexing person. Not a vast amount is known about his early life, but he was living alone and seemed to keep to himself. The man was apparently a huge enthusiast for scuba diving and boats, and he had even worked as a security guard on several film sets. Saying that, he had managed to get himself fired from two of these jobs, but it's not actually clear or known why. There was nothing particularly appealing why. about Adam, and it seems like this was something that all women around him knew. His ex-girlfriend allegedly cheated on him, leaving mm. Adam both hurt and angry, and it's reported by the few friends that he had that this was the point in his life where things began to go downhill. Yeah. One ex-partner of his described him as being extremely controlling and abusive. He would often force himself he looks like the type of person upon too. her, and forcefully yeah. used restraining devices during sex. He was yeah. also into well, BDSM, break, break. not that this is anything noteworthy. Now, Adam had no criminal record and had never been on the police radar before. However, after this phone call, that was all about to change. Adam seemed alarmed when his upstairs neighbour suggested that they call the plumber to fix the drains, and instead asked them if he could try to fix the issue himself. The neighbours were dubious over this recommendation, but eventually they decided to give him some time to try and repair it. However, after a few more days of the ongoing problem and still no resolution, the couple ran out of patience and called a plumber on the 29th of December. After beginning to investigate the issue, this plumber was met with a very strong aroma of decay. No blockage was found in the upstairs apartment though, so Adam was asked for entry. The 45-year-old man appeared to be quite edgy with the idea, and it was noted that he was pacing back and forth in his apartment the entire time, asking multiple questions about what the plumber was doing and asking how long it would take. Now, this was a pretty difficult job, and so the plumber decided to snake the drain using a flexible metal wire. However, after working for around three or four hours, he began to remove some rather strange material that he'd never experienced in a pipe before, that of course being quite fleshy and meaty. With more than 10 pounds of the stuff coming out of the- I'm just- bruh, 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 we thought you were gonna do it, bruh, you really got neighbors, you really got upstairs neighbors type shit, you gotta live in the same goddamn pretty much house, you thought you was gonna flush that shit down or whatever, like come on bruh. The pipe, he was beginning to grow very concerned, he decided to call his boss for a second opinion, who then told him to call the police immediately. Communications. Hi there, how are you? Good, you? Good, thanks. Uh, just, uh, I'm a plumber and I'm on site for uh, uh, a job. We got, uh, we're, we're snaking a drain and we were, uh, we've been pulling back, uh, we probably pulled back about 10 pounds, 15 pounds of like, it looked like flesh type of stuff. Meat, we've been working at it for like three, four hours now, right? Oh, okay. And we, we can't get it clear, but we keep pulling back chunks of you know, whatever the hell it is. That's tough. After That's receiving tough. the phone call, officers were dispatched to the residence to investigate. Initially, they asked the upstairs couple if they'd been flushing meat down their toilet, which, predictably, they hadn't. And when officers decided to question Adam, the situation took a very sudden turn. It was to their shock that- All you gotta say is no tape shit. Hey, let's do it in the house. Just gotta say no, bro. He's gotta deny that. Adam held up. I don't know why. Not, not like I'm hoping Adam gets away with. I'm just saying, like, why? Why would you open um, up? The situation took a very sudden turn. It was to their shock that Adam held up his hands and said, "Okay, you've got me." The jig is up. It's a body, and if you want the rest of her, she's in my freezer. And she's pretty defleshed. The confession hit officers like a ton of bricks. They yeah, what the fuck are you supposed to like? Imagine being the I'm not puzzling. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But like, imagine just doing a, like, a check. Hey, just going to the house. Hey, there's me in the fucking pipes and shit. Like, you don't. I guess you suspect some foul play type shit, but like, you walk in, that boy just. You got me, my boy. Say so you got me. That hey, the body's like, rest of the body's in a fucking freezer. Tank. Like, you're like, okay, Pajanzu, come shoot. Like, what the fuck? He entered the apartment Pajanzo. to investigate further, Go only to be greeted by a very horrendous scene. The basement apartment was quite literally awful. Possessions were scattered everywhere, covered in dirt and grease. The floor was covered with so much filth that narrow walkways had formed to allow passage through the residence. And worst of all was the overpowering smell of decay. 
The toilet and the bathroom had been removed, where Adam had desperately tried to relieve the blockage without any success, and found in the bedroom was the most gruesome discovery of them all. After locating a freezer, it was opened to reveal the partially skeletonized remains of a young woman, with her head found inside a plastic bag. Found on the neck was the tattoo of the word alive. Tragically, the same tattoo that Rory Hache had. DNA tests were performed on the remains, and, as you can likely imagine, were confirmed to belong to that of the missing teenager. Devastatingly, at the time of her murder, Rory had actually been pregnant, meaning that two lives had cruel. What the fuck? That shit just took a left. I guess she was in the hospital. She was probably feeling some shit. She was about to take, uh, she was about to find out, but like, damn! I didn't put the two and two together until and maybe I wasn't paying attention though, but damn. were confirmed to belong to that of the missing teenager. Devastatingly, at the time of her murder, Rory had actually been pregnant, damn. meaning that two lives had cruelly been taken from the That's world. Tough. Further evidence of Rory's demise could be found in the rest of the apartment. Her blood was found on the skirting boards, walls and ceiling, and her running shoes were found in a plastic bag on the floor, also covered in her blood. Damn. During the search, police also discovered various sex toys. A white variety of knives and, terrifyingly, an explosive device too, which would later turn out to be a crudely built pipe bomb. Now, no one has any idea why he had this, but potentially, the phone call made to the police could have actually prevented an entire massacre. Bomb squads were called to deal with the device, which was later detonated before anyone was injured. Damn! That is crazy shit! Damn! News report. Damn. Or it's even capturing the moment it was detonated. When the investigation continued, a bent hammer containing Rory's DNA was also found. And it's very likely that, tragically, this was the murder weapon. Adam was arrested that very day, but without any oh, firm evidence like of him actually committing the murder, he was only charged with interference of a dead body. This did, however, allow investigators to bring him in for interrogation, but sadly, he wouldn't give much away. Although he was interviewed for around an hour, it was with very limited success. He remained coy with any details and even refused to engage with the officers beyond more than just basic questions. However, thankfully, this wouldn't be the only time he was interviewed. We will get to that later. Now, without a court order, investigators could not interview him any further. But thankfully, during his bail hearing, he was told he would be held in custody until his trial. Despite only being charged with interference of a dead body, the investigators knew that he was definitely guilty of far more. They he just didn't know committed. what off. But around seven months after him. Adam's initial arrest, a huge development came within the case, and it all centered around a major discovery at the crime scene. Within one of the kitchen drawers, a I mean, wine. You literally got her head? You literally got her limb? Like, you literally got her running shoe? Like, what else do you need? Well, what else proof do you need? Hunting knife was found. The knife itself was not really a surprise, but what was found on the knife would blow the investigation wide, wide open. open. Found on the blade of the knife was the DNA of another female human, and this one did not come from Rory Hache. And after running it through analysis, it matched up to a woman named Candace Fitzpatrick. Now, Candice was another Ottawa citizen, and sadly, she had already been reported as missing since March 2008. Similarly to Rory, she was 19 years old at the time of her disappearance, oh, no. and unbelievably, had not been seen or heard from her family in over 10 years. Candice- Oh, no, 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 she been missing for 10 years, and the bro! Damn, she's been missing for 10 years. I know she's probably dead right now. Like, she don't, but like, 10 years and you, per person, like, you, like, 10 years and you still haven't got justice, bro. It's been 10 years, that man just living life. He just killed another person type shit. Like, like if you go missing, you expect justice to be this served. This was shit. also a troubled team. Like, if Described I ever get kidnapped type shit, if I ever get killed, I'm expecting justice to be served to the motherfucker that did it. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
That's the type of mentality. On and off the streets, struggling with drug addiction and also turning to sex work. She too would often leave home for weeks at a time with little to no warning. And with both women bearing a strikingly similar history and physical appearance, the uncanny parallels were enough to send chills through the investigators. Now, given Candace's flighty lifestyle, those around her were not overly concerned whenever she disappeared for a short while. So, when she suddenly vanished after walking on a journey to a nearby mall, initial worries were not that high. However, as hours of silence turned into weeks, and then eventually months, her father began to grow increasingly worried for her safety. Seriously, though, months? I have no idea why it took so long, but That's her disappearance saying, like, wasn't reported. Maybe you could have found her text if you were more worried, you know what I'm saying? Like, my parents will, hey, if I don't call my mom for like a day, if I'm on a trip or some shit, or a couple days, she's gonna trip. Until 2010. This meant that most of the efforts to locate her safely were already pitifully small. Her father spent years searching for her, Stupid. but sadly, all hopes were dismissed despite his best efforts. And tragically, 10 years later, the worst of his fears would be confirmed in Adam's apartment. It's Eleven... been 10 years, what the fuck do you expect? No way she like, if she did this, like, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Like, what you expect? You literally waited a month to months after try to his arrest. Adam Strong Mo was a month once again fucking brought long back in for questioning. Time. Now, investigators knew that they had to be extremely careful with how they spoke to him as the interrogation had to be admissible in court to be used by the prosecution. The detective began by making sure that all of Adam's needs were met during the 12-hour interview, Damn. which included cigarette oh, no. breaks and even his favorite food. And oh, cigarettes, well, let me tell Damn. you, some of the things he said in this interview were absolutely infuriating. Just a quick side note, but I am absolutely amazed at how much this guy ordered. I mean, I know I don't eat that much, but holy shit did this guy have a stomach. I suppose 2800 calories isn't that much if it's your last civilian. Yeah, it's just, hey, you, you know what you did, he's about to eat good, bro. You give that man one last meal, pretty much. Meal. I'm more than goddamn menu. I have to say, good choice on the spicy chicken wraps, too. But the way that Adam spoke about his victims really hit me, if I'm honest. He spoke about them as if they were worthless objects, and not even human. Never worry. Really? Yeah, you know why? Yeah, I'm going to I'll tell you why. Because to tell somebody not to go in your freezer will make them go in. Exactly! The detective exactly. on duty was simply great at building trust and rapport with Adam, allowing him the chance to spill all his secrets and dark truths. He openly confessed to dismembering and disposing of Rory, removing her limbs and dumping her torso in the lake, before cutting up the rest- How are you such a psychopath to a point where- you cut someone up like that and you're eating like regular ass food, regular meat type shit, you're eating chicken sandwich type shit, like, no. ...of her body and attempting to flush her piece by piece down the toilet. Piece by piece, okay, how much of her body did you guys get back? Obviously, the entire skeleton structure, right? Well, we obviously, whatever was in the house. Yes, in the freezer. Yes. And how much of it were you able to pull out of the pipes? Bro, just spilling the tea like he ain't do nothing wrong, bro. Bro, just catch us and you, bro. Quit, man. It was, it was bad luck. Yeah, that's what I tell people. They're like, you're stupid. I'm like, you kidding me? Well, that's an awesome way. Yeah, I just, I just got greedy, that's all. So, I just got greedy. The 24th is when you start this. You said Christmas Eve. Yes. Are you, are you doing this while it's frozen or partially defrosted? Completely defrosted. Now that would His attitude throughout the entire interview is quite simply awful. He seemed to have no care about what he had done, yeah. or how he could have affected so many other lives with his actions. Adam himself claimed to have all the traits of a serial killer, including a taste for killing animals. He also stated that the only reason he was caught was due to inadequate plumbing, which, quote, was a freaking shame for me. And when questioned about the DNA of Candace Fitzpatrick, he didn't deny the mutilation of her body either. He would then 
can further say that it was his own procrastination in not boiling the knife that led to it being discovered. Adam showed absolutely no remorse, no empathy, and no fear of being in prison. And to add to all of this, no matter what the detective tried, he was never able to get Adam to admit to the actual killing of either Rory or Candace. Adam would even have the barefaced audacity to ask the detective to, quote, pass his condolences on to the family. Okay. Moving to the legal proceedings of this case, Adam Strong was charged with first degree murder of Candace Fitzpatrick no and Rory Hache, despite Candace's body at the time not being found. Now, in Canada, first degree murder is qualified through premeditation or in commission of another crime, such as robbery or sexual assault. Adam's case was deemed to involve the latter, as his DNA was sadly found inside Rory's body, Damn. and there were serious signs of genital mutilation too. This meant that eligibility of first degree murder was essentially a slam dunk for Adam Strong and in December of 2008, his trial finally began. I'm Pam Seidel outside the Oshawa courthouse. Gruesome details emerged here this morning on this, the first day of the first degree murder trial of Adam Strong. The Oshawa man is charged with killing two teenagers nearly a decade apart. The family and friends of one of the victims, Rory Hache, could only sit and listen in horror as the Crown described the how the body bro. parts of the young woman were found in Kill someone else, got to live 10 years free, kill someone else, like, come on, man, 10 years is crazy. Bitch bags inside the home of the accused. During his trial, the prosecution put their own version of events with regards to Rory Hache. It is theorized that Adam lured the vulnerable teenager to his apartment on the understanding of exchanging sexual services for money. Once in his apartment, Adam restrained Rory using a BDSM-style contraption, before savagely beating her with the hammer found in his home. Although her body was discovered with multiple bruises to her face and head, Adam denied that this was the cause of her death. Prosecutors then claim that Adam dismembered the young woman and then dumped her torso in Yoshua Lake. This theory was backed up by a cell phone data, which pinged near the lake on September the 4th, 2021, around one week before the torso was discovered. He then waited several months before chopping up her body and discarding it down the toilet, okay. showing absolutely no remorse or sorrow for what he had done. The defense argued that there was no solid proof of Adam being Rory's killer, and that maybe she had simply died of a drug overdose. They claimed that Adam then panicked and disposed of the body in the manner he he had confessed to. While all of this was going on, Adam spent his time in court chuckling and even laughing, and on some days didn't even bother to attend. I honestly have no words for this guy. The jury did not believe his fabricated lies, and saw Adam for the man that he truly was. Nice. Cold-blooded and remorseless killer. And on March the 16th, 2021, Adam Strong was found guilty of the first degree murder of Rory Hasher. Damn, that shit started in 2008 and this shit just finished 2021? Like... Wait, did I hear that right? Like, after the trial began in 2008, and he finally got this... Man, I'm confused. I don't understand how this Sadly, is working. he was not found guilty of the murder of Candace Fitzpatrick due to there being no body, That's but he would later crazy. be found guilty of manslaughter instead. That's Several crazy. impact statements were read out by the family members of like, both... You've been gone for 10 years and people still don't know what the fuck happened. Rory and Candace. Oksana Fitzpatrick, who is Candace's sister, said... You took away so many experiences from her. You took away her young life. Bill Fitzpatrick tearfully said, After all the years of searching, this was not the outcome I expected. I was shattered by the news. Candace will never get to know her nephews and nieces. Candace will never get the chance to be a mom. Okay, Unfortunately, years. due to contracting COVID, Shannon Dion was unable to be at the courtroom during sentencing. But in a statement read out by the court, she described Rory as being a far from misplaced child, and one that meant everything to her. She had no idea what life was going to be like from that point forward, and nothing would ever be the same again. She Thank believed you. from the very beginning that Rory's killer was a seasoned one, as her daughter was tough and, quote, wouldn't have been an easy catch for anyone to handle. She concluded with, I will never see Rory fall in love, graduate school, be married, or have children. On April the 21st, 2021, Adam Strong was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 25 years for the murder of Rory. He would also receive 18 oh, years the for the manslaughter of Candace to be served concurrently, a maximum sentence that can possibly be given under Canadian law. 
This means that Adam will be behind bars for a bare minimum of 43 years, with yeah. life as a maximum. The judge concluded the sentencing hearing by commenting how Adam showed no realistic signs of rehabilitation, given his behaviour both in the interview and in the courtroom. The terrible man is now serving his time at the mm -hmm. Joyful Correctional Centre. It does not change the fact that our girls are not coming home, but yeah. today we let them rest. Today this monster's off our street and he's no longer a part of our day. Yeah, he's no done. longer a part of our lives. Yeah. I think the judge did an incredible job of bringing this man to his knees. Yeah. Since the judge started talking, I turned to my daughter, Roxanne, and I said, you could hear it in his voice, he's, he's, he's not happy, he's mad. So I knew he was going to come up with a good sentence. We addressed Adam, he let Adam know in no uncertain terms. What he, what he did was wrong, and he's being punished for it. Nice. Now, while this may seem like the end of our case today, there is one final twist to the story. Sometime during February 2022, Adam made the strange decision to confess new information to a jail guard. And if you haven't guessed what that was, it was the location of Candace Fitzpatrick's body. Police responded immediately by authorizing Adam to be taken to the gravesite so he could show them exactly where she was hidden. It was then, in the area of Secreto Drive and Britannia Avenue East, and after 14 years of being missing, that the remains of Candace were finally found. After 14 years of questions, Bill Fitzpatrick and his family could now finally begin to have some closure. To this very day, Candace's cause of death is still unknown, and the investigation is still ongoing with Adam Strong, with new evidence being discovered in his apartment. Not much more has been released to the public so far, but it does suggest that Rory and Candace may not be the last of Adam's victims. Rory Hache That's and crazy. Candace Fitzpatrick were two teenagers who were trying to find their place. Uh, he only got caught with Candace because she had he had a hair on a knife or some shit like that. He wouldn't just have openly confessed about her. That's wow. crazy. What if, bro? How, what if there is? Plenty more. That'd be Facing crazy. difficult struggles, both of them were trying their best to turn their life around. Both girls had loving families who thought extremely highly of them and wanted nothing but the very best for their daughters. <laughs> and despite neither girl having ever met each other, they will forever be linked by their tragic and untimely passing, all at the hands of a sadistic and remorseless monster. With Rory's family attached to not one, but two motorcycle gangs, it is very likely that Adam will forever be looking over his shoulder in prison. And to be honest, I don't blame them if they seek revenge either. So anyway, yeah. folks, I think I'm going to wrap this one up here. Thank I'll you. I'll do it for that video if you enjoyed that subscribe and I wrote 2K. That'd be crazy. They gotta get their food. Or at least make his life miserable taste, you know what I'm saying? Like, killing them low-key would be an easy way out, but you gotta, like, Make them man regret it for the rest of his life type shit. He in that shit for a minute, so yeah. Hey. That's just, hey. That's crazy, though. Ten years of poor. Bro, like this, say, bro. How, many, how do we know there's not more people, bro? That's crazy, but we out, man.